Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be talking about agenesis of the corpus callosum. So let's first talk about what the corpus callosum is. What you're looking at here is you're looking at the top of the, from the top of the brain, looking down, right? So imagine I take my skull off and now we're looking at my head like this. This is my left side, this is my right side. This is the left hemisphere, this is the right hemisphere. Imagine the eyes would be up in here, my cerebellum would be back in here, the back of the head would be in here, right? or the back of the brain. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And about the eighth week of development, what happens is your brain starts to grow uh, axons. And these axons will help the two hemispheres communicate with each other. And this actually takes up until your teenage years to finish developing. But anyways, you'll get about 200 million of these axons that go across here, okay? And again, we call this the corpus callosum. Now, they help the, each side communicate with each other, like I said. Now, what can happen is, in some people, is this doesn't develop. Now, why won't it develop? It could be several different things. One, it could be genetic. Two, it could be fetal alcohol syndrome, right? If the mother drinks while the, the, the uh, baby's developing. It could be due to something called Chiari malformation type two. It could be due to some type of trauma. And I already mentioned, I think that it can be genetic, right? So now, two things that can happen in this. One is instead of these forming back and forth like this, they may form longitudinally, right? So they would be like this along the walls on the inside of this hemisphere here. And so when they do this, we're gonna call these probst bundles. All right, so it's gonna be called probst bundles. So now we're not gonna have the communication there, this is all gone. What the probes bundles can actually do is they can actually cause enlargement and widening of the ventricles that are in here. And it looks kind of like a race car. And they actually call this, when you look at it on an MRI or a CAT scan, it's gonna look kind of like a race car. And they actually call this the race car sign, right? So that's one thing that can happen. Now, you'll get the probes bundles. Now, the other thing that could be happen happening is that you don't form these axons at all, right? I mean, it's a, it's a true agenesis of the corpus callosum. You didn't form any of these axons, and therefore you won't get those pros bundles, and you won't get the race car sign, okay? So that's two things that can happen. The other thing that can happen, too, is you can actually get a part, they could, this could partially grow, right? The uh, corpus callosum can partially grow, and when it does that, it can actually change the shape of the cingulate gyrus. And if you're looking at the person straight on, on, an M on a CAT scan or an MRI, they actually will get what they call the moose head uh, sign. Okay, so that's something else that can happen. So what are the symptoms of this? Well, the symptoms can be things such as ADHD. They may have a, uh, autism type of symptoms. They may have normal intelligence. They may have developmental delays. Uh, they could have seizures, visual problems, and things such as that. But like I said, they could have normal intelligence. Sometimes there's social issues that can happen too. And one of the things that can happen is they may not be able to recognize facial expressions. And this is an example of the race car sign. The white areas are the ventricles, and you can see they've been pushed aside by the probes bundles. And this is the moose head sign. You can see on the left, a close-up of what it looks like. It looks like a moose's head. And then on the right, you can also see it looks like a moose head too. All right, so that's it for agenesis of the corpus callosum. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And we will catch you next time.